Okay, Chris, uh, Robert, Johan, hi, this is Matt again. I'm going to give you a little quickie on some Fox Pro form stuff inside the form designer and some of the code, you know, that kind of goes along with it. So look at this one form I've designed here. This is just something I threw together as an example. This is a form where I manually dragged several individual controls, like these buttons right here. Um, <clears throat> I even built this uh, container where I was able to create a container on the form locally and then drag into that one form, uh, container you know, some more individual controls that I built right here. These two uh, items up here though are subclasses you know, from my class library so that if I were to go and look at for instance that little form menu bar this is what just that one container class looks like with some buttons in it okay and then in the form I've used an instance of that class right here. Now you'll notice on these if I do right click and edit if I thought I say oh, I don't want that button if I, I can't delete if I hit delete button it'll complain and say oh you can't delete that object because it's part of the parent containing class right but um, on this one for instance in this container in this text box I'm gonna hit delete and I can easily delete these because you know I put them here uh, and Chris at one time you had said oh well how, how would somebody you know uh, drag a control from one container to another but that's just not something we can do in Fox Pro I, I could not gra drag this label I can't drag it outside of this container I cannot do that it's trapped now I can say like cut and then come here and do right click and paste and I can move it that way and I can move it into there I can say cut here uh, right click edit and, and paste in so it's not a drag and drop you can do some cut and paste but uh, you know, it's through the cut paste menu, not drag and drop. But um, anyway, let's see. So, uh, so this is the way somebody would make a form. We'd never sit here and write all this code to do it. But what I want to make sure that you realize is that that form designer is saved into a file type called you know blah blah dot scx, which is the Fox Pro form. That is really just a DBF format, which I think you guys probably already know. So I can go to the command window and say use you know that table uh, like a like a DBF, and then I can say browse on it. And what you'll see is that for every control on that um, form there's a corresponding record inside of this SCX table. Uh, the form itself has the first record and then the individual controls on here are separate rows. Now uh, a class container like that menu bar it will not have a record for each individual button. It just has one single record for the container class and that's it. The buttons themselves live over in the container world and uh, in the container you know base class but um, for every one of those objects Fox Pro displays information about it in this table format and it uses this memo field which is quite ridiculous because most of the data is really really um, small okay like for instance uh, here's a, a, a class you double click it says oh that's a, a command button that's the class name it tells you where the what VCX uh, where, where it came from the base class is the Fox Pro native a class of a command button the object name is literally the, the name I would have given it you know inside the form uh, who the parent is which is interesting because that tells you the containership level of it so in this case of this command button the the, the form is the the um, uh, container uh, some of these uh, is the parent container. Oh, here's one you see where this one is the form dot container so you see some container ship going on for this particular record right here uh, and that's how the container ship is established is who my who is my parent you know every child control is going to say that if it's dragged right onto the form the, the the form will be the parent if it's inside of a container well then the container will be the the um, you know the, the parent um, and then properties you know so I don't see any local property oh uh, properties yeah so for any given one the properties of it the caption the visible any property that I set those are persisted here in, in a field called properties and it's for that particular record now uh, of the methods I want you to notice also that see how some are lowercase memo and some are uppercase if it's uppercase it means that for that record this field has some data and if it's lowercase that there's no data for it here and um, also so then I want to look about methods so this little command button earlier I had put some code in here and I want you to see that let me go open the form up I have to close it down from here let me go modify and let's say we look at this button so I've got uh, the click event and I've got one little message box command here okay and even in the init method I put some code just some goofball stuff to show you that you know I, I can call the, the default init method 
pa little passive variable that's should say ln x pass a value down into there uh, I capture a return value from that here and, and if blah you know do some function and even return even the init method uh, can and perhaps should return a true or false uh, even if it, it either came locally resolved or from the parent class method so let me save those now okay so oh yeah 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 so let me go back now and use this SCX and I want to go and browse and I want you to go look at these methods with me though look at this here's the only thing that has it is that button so if I double click on this look um, it has done its own procedure I'm gonna can I do yeah you know th this is sort of you know how it stores that now you saw in the code all I typed was the actual lines of code right here I typed this bit of stuff in between here okay I did not have to type this procedure and in procedure the form manages those stuff those things for you and you know they're just there as wrappers and so if we were to parse this you know we can find procedure and in procedure for every method and then we can get the individual code pieces out of it if we were to open this and read through it and, and parse it apart which I'll show you more about that later okay so um, now, I, if I were to do edits on this data right now, these would be real edits to that data. I, I could, uh, you know, change code, save it, write it. If I really wanted to go, you know, low, low cowboy renegade on this code, I can change this, and, and it's like me changing crap in the form designer. And every now and then, people will hack uh, hack this data in this way if you if you want to go low level to touch it. But it's pretty risky because if you screw something up down here, you, you can break the whole darn form, and you got to fix it before it run again okay now so that's that's how the SCX and the, and the uh, works to save the data and the visual form designer works to let you edit the data okay so as you see there's no code uh, written about the form and the objects themselves I just I just set properties you know on them so in those uh, those properties uh, there's a little property uh, sheet right here let me drag it into view here uh, for every object that I'm selected all the individual properties are shown here and any changes I make I do it visually but yet they're written to the SCX file okay now um, what I want to show you though is that there is a, a tool called a class designer and it's a little bit misnamed because it can also browse forms as well so I'm going to the class browser I'm going to click on that form object right here the form and as you see it will show me sort of those five or six little main controls controls you know that I had dragged onto the form and um, it doesn't really show me any code about it doesn't show me properties it's really not very useful but you can see a little bit about the, the form you know on a big form it'd be a lot of stuff here although you really can't do a ton of stuff with it I mean I guess I could Nah, I thought I could launch the form to edit it, but it doesn't do that. But it does do one thing that's really interesting. I want to show you this. This fourth button right here where it says view class code. Well, what that'll do is it will render sort of on the fly this code version of that form. Now, this never is really alive in Fox Pro until I use that little button. And it's not part of a compile. I mean, maybe behind the scenes, Fox Pro generates this stuff to compile it. I don't know. And if I wanted to save this file to disk right now, I could. And this would be valid, runnable code. I mean, this code, it's define class blah. So it's sort of an academic version. Robert, here's all those references to add object, add object, you know, and it, and it tells you the name of the object and what kind of base class it is. And you see the width and all the line continuations and property names, you know, separated by comments and all this stuff <clears throat> if I if I wanted to write all this crap out by hand I certainly could but good grief you know you can imagine what a tedious task this would be uh, but somebody could render this this stuff out delete the SCX and then just simply include this this PRG in their uh, in their code base and, and run it and edit it and maintain it from here uh, and it would work. Uh, here you see those methods that we looked at earlier, the uh, the click event, and you see so it shows, you know, button name dot click or you know control name dot init and all that kind of mess. Okay, um, so this this is sort of how the code is available to you, but it's not very automated. Nobody really really goes about harvesting form code like this. I mean, a few people might here and there, but almost everybody once you edit this by the way you can never get back to a form designer you know you sort of do this as a one-way transition to code but but that's it there's nothing that would unravel it and bring it uh, back alive in a form designer again you know at least not today if you guys made a form designer they'd 
they'd probably love you for it and you're certainly welcome to tackle it of course now one of the things I did though is that I went and have made some tooling that will export that um, form into sort of a, a text-based format so it's not a SCX it's not uh, code it's just terse data pieces uh, this is one way I render it's just text where I kind of basically give you a little snapshot of all those fields out of that um, you know SCX file so I'll show you every record and then every field or the relevant fields at least uh, that were, were scraped out of that but the most valuable thing I've done I think is that I've made an XML version of that same file so here is uh, boy, I wonder why it's not. Um, hmm. Okay, yeah, here we go. So here is an XML version of of that deep of that SCX file where I have taken and written deserialized basically that whole form over to a type of data which I think is very useful as we would parse this in some other way so you can see all those same attributes in a XML with data and property and even the properties are a collection of property settings and name and value and all this mess okay so all of it is is a nicely formatted structured XML which I think anybody could write perhaps a, a designer or a parser to sit on top of this stuff to redraw or transfer this form to something else which is something I have done so now let me bring you over here into um, where I am able to t I was able to take I'm going to show you the code first I rent well I'll open the form here's where I rendered from my XML I wrote X sharp code to go and generate looky here a win forms designer version of that same form there's the class here's a button here another container here's these individual things uh, there's a container here which isn't rendering properly because this is still a work in progress for me but inside of here eventually you're gonna see other controls okay I did not hand code this I generated this from this XML right here which I scraped from the SCX trying to you know just land on something that would get that darn form out of Fox Pro into um, you know Visual Studio so if you go look at the code that I generate it should look exactly like Visual Studio Designer code. I mean, that's what I copied it after. I made a template. I do, you know, template uh, sub macro substitution on the class names, and I'm inheriting from the individual things. You see the field definitions up here. You see the object instantiation code here. All those darn properties that I scraped out of Fox Pro. I'm regurgitating that here as like real dot net stuff okay so at the end of the day you know my goal was that uh, you know nobody would know it's like where did all this magical Visual Studio code come from you know because it was exported out of Fox Pro even to the individuals my little toolbar in here um let's see where's my menu bar yeah here it is here's my little menu bar class let's see if this stupid so there you go I mean here's that class and if you go look at the code behind for it it's the same thing you know three buttons as individual controls uh, each with uh, some properties and again this is generated from this XML document right here which I scraped out of the Fox Pro you know SCX table and uh, when it gets down to method code where would that be like down to here uh, somewhere when I get down to um, method code what I did was I write the, the method code out to a to a, a PRG file and then I reread that back in uh, when we put uh, those in those methods into the to the uh, X sharp you know win forms app somewhere I forget how it works but anyways man I just want to give you that sort of preview at least on the Fox Pro side of, of how you know what's code and what's not and, and why it is and all that mess hopefully uh, this gives you some new insight about the whole ecosystem of Fox Pro and forms if you have any questions send me an email let me know I can uh, create another video for you and explain it all to you thanks